All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all already know what time it is, man. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe for more daily 2K content. And one time for each and every one of you, all of my gym stars. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BKA the People's Champ, coming to you live with another video. Did y'all have a good workout yesterday? Did you have a good workout this morning? Did you get your cardio up? All that good stuff. Let me know down in the comments. Do you prefer working out in the morning? Well, in the evening, man, like me, me, I do two a days. I get up in the morning, I go, I get about 20, 20 minutes of cardio in in the morning, do a whole little workout. Then I, I work out, I work, you know, do my normal day at work. And then I go to the gym in the evening, uh, 20 minutes of cardio or 40 minutes of cardio. And then I try to get, you know, get my whole workout in. So I try to get at least 40 minutes of cardio in every day. And then, um, and then I might even play basketball, so, so that's even more. So I try to get 40 minutes of cardio in every day at least. Some days I get an hour, then I do upper body. I do try, I, I know you're not supposed to do it, but I do a whole body workout every day. I do uh, arms, chest, abs, and then I do legs. I do that every day. On a, I do it light every day, and then I concentrate on one area every day. So I do a total body workout every day, and then... I concentrate on the area. So some days I concentrate on arms, some days I concentrate on shoulders. And I know they say you're not supposed to do that, but clearly, clearly it's working for me. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't do the same thing that everybody else does. Same thing with this YouTube stuff, man. I don't do what everybody else does. I just I just try to drive and steer in my own lane, but that's about to change. Because with YouTube, you can't be different. You can be different in working out and doing stuff like that. And, you know, everybody, everything is tailored to you. But in YouTube, you got to do the same thing that everybody else is doing. So I got to make me a playmaker, man. I'm about to get this VC up. Make me a playmaker. I'm coming to Xbox this weekend. Well, not this weekend. And y'all know I'm not coming to Xbox this weekend. I'm going to tell y'all that in a second. But first off, before we get started with the video, man, I need y'all to let me know since we all got different tastes. Who y'all going with today, man? Are we going with Piggy Triple X? Are we going with Melrose Fox? Damn it, I say Pinky Triple X. Or Melrose Fox. Now, look, in an ideal world, I have both of them. But if I can only choose one, I'm probably going to choose. See, it depends on what, what if, I, if, I'm, if I'm working, if I want somebody who is rear end endowed, I'm going to go with Pinky that day. But if I want to go with the slim, you know, the slim thickness, I'm going to go with Melrose Fox. But you know that that is how I go, man. Plus, Mel Rose Fox is just some it's just something about the way her mouth is shaped that is just like, yes. But yeah, and y'all know what I'm talking about down in the comment section. But look though, no, y'all let me know what y'all going with, man. Gun to your gun to my head. I'm probably gonna take Pinky just because ah, I depend on what day of the week it is and how I feel. Cause I'm gonna take Mel Rose Fox a lot of days too. Anyway, on to the video, man. Check it out. Speaking of this weekend, why I cannot start playing on Xbox this weekend is because Puma Mania is this weekend. It's coming out this weekend. Um, like you said, here it is. The 15th, the 16th, and the 17th. So you do, you're do. you going to have Valentine's Day. You're going to have Friday in order to do your thing. That's fine. But Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, hey, you better be ready. You better strap up, strap in, do whatever you got to do. Now, I'm taking my wife to see the photograph tonight. We're going to, we're going to Olive Garden. We're going to go see the photograph. We're getting all of that done tonight. Then... Friday, you know, I got a little, I got a little surprise, prize, prizey for a Friday. Uh, we, I gotta tell you, we're gonna do a little extra date. Um, take my son out probably, and we're gonna watch some. We're gonna go see Sonic the Hedgehog. Saturday and Sunday, I mean, yeah, Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m. Hey, it's on me and T. I told me T and Mad Dog, it's, we, we about to get, we about to get busy. Whoever's out there, man. So you know, I got my center. We gonna rank up. It's easy to rep up as a center, man. Two blocks a game, one shot. And, um, well, I got to hit one three. I got to get a block and a rebound. And maybe one steal, I get nine, nine, nine across the board. And that's it. That's all I have to do. But, it, you know, it's hard to get that one shot sometimes because sometimes they put you in a situation where you got to ISO. But, Puma Mania is this weekend. Make sure you govern yourselves accordingly. You got, you have the 13th and the 14th to get all your affairs in order. And then on the 15th, 16th, and 17th, you good, man. Take your girl out. Like I said, I gave you the blueprint tomorrow. Wake her up. Um, you know, send her, wake her up, uh, send her off to work, don't even say nothing. Send her some flowers or something while she's at work. When she gets off, uh, just meet her at the job, Take her, walk into the job if you can. Meet her at the job, walk in, take her where she gotta go, or when she gets to the house, y'all straight out the door, man. Go see the photograph, go see whatever movie you wanna see, take her out, nice dinner, all that stuff. Saturday morning, wake her up, send her ass to the spa. 
Do you got a spa day today, baby? She gonna think it's just so nice of you. Hey, send her to that spa day. They, they got some. They got some all day spa days like thirty, forty dollars, man, fifty bucks. She ain't gonna care. Or just send her, just set her up a manicure, a pedicure at the local Walmart, whatever. She's out the house by nine o'clock. Boom, you good to go, man. There you go. You got Puma Mania all weekend, and then you got Backshot Mania. And if you lucky, you got Backshot Mania all weekend too when you're taking the rest. Yes. Hey, look, shout out to my boy Cab. But look though, that's how you do it, man. Puma Mania this weekend. Make sure y'all don't forget. Make sure you guys have yourselves together. Govern yourselves accordingly. And uh, get, get plenty of rest tomorrow night. Because Saturday morning, put the kids to bed and break out the china. Because we going to ride tonight. Up next, man, the NBA 2K League. Uh, they got their draft coming up. And it says, on February the 22nd, the lives of 68 players will change in an instant. And now uh, they put together a, little, a nice little... Nice little trailer, uh, you know, nice uh, it's, that, that, that it's not gonna let me play. Why won't let me play? Twitter video, Twitter, y'all need to get y'all videos together. Y'all need to fix these just so that I can do these videos. Just for me, nobody else, just for me. Fix it for your boy. Dang, dang there you go. Better Beast, his life was changed. He didn't get in season one, but he was in season two. What is this, is this season three right here? Yeah, because 18 and then 19, and this is 20. Look, here we go right here. I think they had chalk. That chalk right there. Uh that bad. Look at Bad with the fresh suit on, boy. Hey, that's that's the dog. That's my that's my um who y'all think gonna be the MVP this year? Hey, look, February the 22nd, man, 6 p.m. Are you gonna be watching the draft? Do you feel like the draft is something that you're going to tune into? Do you even care enough about this game to watch the NBA the, the, the 2K League draft? Do you even feel like this game is ready for primetime competition? See, when you have a game where you have primetime competition and you've got games, you know, you're showing the game on, on all the networks, I mean, you know, which is Twitch and all this thing, normally you have a game that's ready for primetime competition that you're constantly working on that is constantly ready for competition, i.e. League of Legends. With League of Legends, they're always ready. They play one patch in the rear, so... You're never playing on the live patch because they're always working the bugs out. You're always playing on one where the bugs are all worked out. If something is not right, they take it out of the game. If some, if a champion is broken and they know about it, they pull that champion out of the game. You can't choose it. They fix all the bugs and all of this stuff, so that's why they pay a, pa a play a patch in the rear. They're never playing on the current patch. So let's say if a champion came out on patch 1.1, you're playing on 1.0, so you can't get that champion until the next patch. And then when they do the next, when they do patches like every week, every two weeks, they're constantly working on the game, constantly evolving the game, constantly making the game better, doing things to make the game better. Take something out, put it in, change how wards work, change how how this item works, change how that item works. I feel like you can't really have a game that's truly competitive unless it's constantly flowing and working. And we know that they're not capable of doing that with 2K because. They're already working on 2K21. This game is pretty much left to its own devices. We might have, we may have one more patch left, but they just took out the explosive behind the back and then they put it right back in, but it's not as explosive. It's just a little bit quicker. I don't know what it is that they can do to make this game ready for primetime competition, but you guys let me know down in the comments. What, what is it that they can do? Because a lot of times when we watch this game, you're really watching the, the people play five out. There's really no very, there's really... No variations or anything like that. You're watching people play five out or, you know, yeah, pretty much five out or four or four or, or three out. And then you got you playing with the center and the guard, you know, pick and roll. Like it, it just it just feels like the gameplay is stale. And it's not because the game itself is stale. It's just that when you play comp competitive games, the only thing that they're going to do is what works. They got to do what they have to do what it takes to score every time. There's not enough of a variety of a way to score or the community lacks creativity on how to score or people are afraid to take chances on other things. They want to take the guaranteed thing. They don't want to take something that's like how Minnesota was actually running different offenses last year or how the 76ers was actually running different offenses and different defenses last year, but it didn't work. They didn't end up winning the title. So that's what that's what you got to realize that people are only going to do in competitive games they're only going to do exactly what happens what's going to work every single time that's why a lot of people run iso because you can control a lot of the situation you got two shooters and you got you got me you got you know it's one-on-one -on -one and you got two shooters if i can get past you i'm going to the rim for a dunk if i get past you and somebody cheats down i kick it to the corner he hits the shot and he does it's real simple 
I think that is that, that we just lack the imagination or basketball acumen to, to design plays to where they're gonna work. I mean, like what what's the plays in, in 2K? Double pick, screen and roll, and ISO. Is that the only three plays that anybody runs? Nobody runs any type of real motion offense, which you really could in this game, and all of that. I don't think it's because it doesn't work. I think it's because the people that play this game truly don't understand how, just like when we play our game and we play an adaptive zone, if me and Paul on the back end, we play an adaptive zone. So we might be playing three back and two up, but Paul might be up at the, as, up as high as the free throw line sometimes. And then maybe I'll be at the free throw line sometimes just depending on who's there. I might drop to the corner one time and then T might drop to the corner one time because it's only one player on that side. They're running an overload, a backside overload, and then they just got this one guy, or what they call it, a one over four. Uh, they might run that, so I might have to come and play the guard at the top. T might have to drop to the corner and all that, but a lot of times when you say you're running a two, three, people just think it's just your zone. No, you're supposed to be running an adaptive zone. I think that that's the problem, that people lack the basketball acumen to really do anything else. They can't do anything else. This is all they understand is just pick and roll. They, they only understand things that only have one or two options. That's really what it is. And that's who we're calling the best players in the game. I just don't I just don't see it, man. Like, I can sit here and look at this game, see how it's played and, and design plays, but nobody wants to take any risk. So it's like, what's the point? You know, it is what it is. Up next, man, we got my boy Duke Dennis, man. He wants to speak out about something. He's got a question for everybody. And now uh, we're going to let him talk about it right here. What I'm saying in this video, simply retweet it. Because I know a lot of people. Let's start it back up. Hey, look, look. If you agree with what I'm saying in this video, simply retweet it. Because I know a lot of people be having the same problem, bro. If you agree with my 2K logic, all right? Let me know, all right? Now, Pete, I'm playing rent game with my brother Dave and some, and some old people. And uh, we punishing the people, by the way. But I get takeover, all right? And they didn't pass me the ball not one time. Yep, I didn't done. get to shoot not one shot with my takeover. All right? And I got a sharp shooting takeover. And I can shoot. You know what I'm saying? All right, now, Pete, I just thought that it was like an unwritten rule. Like something you ain't even got to say. That when somebody on your team get takeover, that's who you feed the ball to. You feel me? That's who you, that's who you get the ball to. I didn't get not a single shot. And it's no problem, but I just thought that everybody knew that. You know what I'm saying? Like, bruh, especially if you got a, if you got like an offensive takeover, all right? Whether it's playmaking, shot creating, sharp shooting, slashing. I ain't talking about glass cleaners, rim protecting, takeover, lockdown, take. I ain't talking about, if you got a takeover that's pretty much guaranteed buckets, yep. and plus it's just being considerate. You don't want to waste nobody's takeover. What is you saying? You do not waste takeover. Hey. You don't waste hey, takeover. So I, you it. feed, bro, you feed, take, you feed the man who got, am I tripping? Y'all, am I tripping? If I'm tripping, let me know. Just say, dude, boy, you tripping. I'll be like, all right, cool. Let me know, bro. <laughs> Hey, all I can tell you is he must be playing with Mad Dog, boy, because you'll be playing with Mad Dog, and uh, you might be takeover. You might be one from takeover. Mad might be literally asleep. He literally might fall asleep on the on, fall asleep on the sticks. Why you got your takeover? So you 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 don't know what might happen with that. But I understand what he's saying, though. A lot of times when you play, if you're not first of all, if you're not the point guard in most of these games, it's gonna be very. Very difficult for you to get takeover in the first place. Like, um, like, uh, you, you understand what I'm saying? Like, like if I'm a, I'm a, I'm a guard or if I'm a, uh, I'm a center or something like that, I gotta get blocks, I gotta get rebounds, I gotta get this, and then I gotta get a couple of shots. It's already hard enough for you to get takeover in the first place. And then sometimes we wait and we be like, yo, I'm one from team. Bro, you might not see that ball. And it might just be because of the flow of the game or how the game goes. Another, t another logic thing is a lot of times, when I used when we used to play the game, if I would get takeover, I was officially the decoy because we were trying to play comp program. When you play comp program, they're gonna dedicate more resources, uh, resources to you. Like uh, so let's say when I had a sharpshooter last year, I would get my sharpshooter takeover right, and now I go stand at the half. Now they gotta have two people over there make sure they're watching me because if they don't, I'm shooting in the guy's face right. T would use that opportunity to know that he's going to have a one-on-one -on -one or whatever. If they did cheat, um, he passed to me and, and I hit it. But if they didn't cheat, 
They now got to play him one-on-one because -on -one they had to put two people over there in my direction. Now, he takes three shots. He got his takeover. Now, that's that's what? That's six points. Plus, when he gets his takeover, that's 12 points. That's an 18-point swing. So, sometimes when you play the game, when you get your takeover, you know that you're the designated decoy. That's why a lot of times when I would get my takeover last year, I wouldn't even do anything. I would just be like, yo, I'm one-off team. Hit team. Everybody eats B. I was just waiting until I got my team takeover. Then when I got my team takeover, who you gonna guard now? So a lot of times, like, that's what you have to do in this game. But sometimes the flow of the game is such that you just can't get the ball every time you got takeover. Sometimes they're gonna dedicate resources to you to where you're just not gonna be able to get get what you got. And plus, we all know the takeover ain't like it was last year, where it's just a free-ass bucket. I mean, it's a freer bucket than it used to be, but it ain't just a super free bucket. But still, I get what you're saying. Sometimes you want off take. It's, it hurts even worse when you want off takeover and or you want off team and it's like 30 seconds left in the half and your team makes no no a, attempt to get you the ball so that you can get the team takeover because you know they're going to drop you below regular take takeover when it goes down. But yeah, hey, let me know what y'all think down in the comments, man. When you when do you have that same problem when you play the game and you get your takeover? Um, or do you realize that you're the designated decoy or do you expect to get the ball? It depends on the situation for me. Sometimes I know that they're going to just face guard me. I'm not going to get it, but that's going to open up things on the backside for my guard. And sometimes it's like, bro, you got to pass that damn ball because, I, you know, I'm, I, I am open. But a lot of times what you do have to realize, too, in this game is the guard is forced to dribble with their head down because the only way, now that the explosive behind the back is out of the game, the only way that you can really dribble is to watch you're the guy that's defending you and you have to react to what he's doing so a lot of times the guard in their defense a lot of times like when people be like why the guard ain't passing the ball why didn't a lot of times the guard has to watch the guy in front of him and see what he's doing and they're just not able to watch the entire floor a lot of people are gonna be like well if you're a good guard you can do it yeah i get it but a lot of times if they got a lock on you and you're not watching that lock and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing that ball gonna get stole, bro. And I'm pretty sure Tia backed me up on that. That ball gonna get stole, man. If you're not watching your defender, that ball gonna get stolen. Then they, 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 that screen gonna turn around there at the other end for a layup. Anyway, y'all, let me know what y'all think down in the comment section, man. Um, when you get takeover, are you the designated decoy, or should you should they feed you the ball? I think it's just situational. Sometimes they can feed you the ball. Sometimes, um. Sometimes it's just not possible because you're going to get double teamed. And sometimes your guard is just trying to get the ball up the floor. I mean, they might be pressing him or something like that. He just can't see you. And, uh, you know, we know how that is. Anyway, man, y'all let me know down in the comments who we going with today. Pinky Triple X or Melrose Fox? Damn it, I say Pinky Triple X or Melrose Fox. Y'all let me know down in the comments, man. I'm going to holler at y'all next time. Till next time, it's your boy Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BK, the People's Champ. Godspeed. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe. And turn on bell notifications so that y'all can see all these videos and all this goodness. And yo, coming up tomorrow or this weekend, I'm going to buy. Y'all let me know if y'all think this is going to be a good video. I'm going to go buy the Kawhi Leonard shoes and I'm going to go hoop in them and do a full review. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments about that, man. And I'm going to holler at y'all next time. Godspeed!